a word, beloved. Shalom. <clears throat> As I thought about the different changes that many of us are going through, be it through family that we think should have been on our side or supported us, be it through external situations that are beyond our control that we never imagined happening to us. When I prayed this morning, the Lord gave me a word. I was thinking about many of the people. I was praying about many of the circumstances that have been presented to me. And the Lord gave me Joseph. And he said, can you imagine Joseph in prison when Joseph could not see the end of the matter? But Joseph, who was in prison, was going to be lifted up on high. Joseph, who was betrayed by his own family, many of the people I speak to are going through it because of family members. It's not strangers or coworkers, although there are some neighbors who are doing things they should not do and taking you through changes that should not even occur. But what we don't understand many times, and I've had this same issue, is that he's molding us. He's got us in a furnace that is refining us and removing the dross and all those unnecessary things out of our lives, out of our spirits, out of our attitudes. He opens our eyes in a different way to cause us to appreciate things that we may not have seen the way we were supposed to see them, beloved. He brought Joseph to my mind. Many of us have children who, no matter how much we try to instruct them, they're going another way. They won't listen. And the more you try to get them to listen, the more they resist you. Many of them have turned completely. They listen to the voices of others. When you look at Joseph with his brothers, Benjamin wasn't out in the field but the other 10 were. They could not speak peaceably to him. Many of us have people in our lives that even when we try to reason with them, there is no reasoning because they have a jealousy that is hateful. His family wanted to kill him but the Lord made a way out of no way because he was working through Reuben who was trying to save him. They wanted to slay him. They wanted to see what would come of him. As a matter of fact, when we look in Genesis chapter 37, verse 20, this is what his brother said, his family those he should have been safe with. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast has devoured him. There are people that want your full destruction, not because you've done evil to them. That glory of the most high is upon you. And some people, when that favor is on you, it's very hard to see how am I favored and I'm going through this. I'm being betrayed by people that should love me, people I love. And it's shocking. They sold him for 20 pieces of silver to the Ishmaelites. Many of us have friends and family that for some small profit have given us up, not caring what will come of us, what these people or situations are gonna to do to us. They have used us for their benefit. 
because of jealousy, beloved. But you see, what they don't know, and many times what we ourselves don't know, is we are being refined for something far greater than we even know. Even when he has given us the understanding that something's coming, we don't know the means or method that the most high is going to use to bring us out, to bring us up. Many times because we grew up in this world, we think that, okay, if I'm supposed to have all this favor, then I should have all those comforts. But you can't make somebody a warrior and never put them in the midst of a battle. They, in order for you to know how to trust in the most high, he's got to put you in situations that you know are beyond your control. And so you see, beloved, Many of us, many of us are put in situations where we have to go to battle. It's easy to follow the most high when trouble's not around, when it's easy stuff. Yes, it is. It's so easy. But in order to be the soldiers that we are, in order to come through this battlefield, clean on the other side. The Most High puts us in situations where we have to pull out those weapons he gave us. Yes, weapons, beloved. But you see, these weapons are not like the weapons of the world. For, our, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, no, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There are some things, you know, it's a stronghold to be in a family and you love them or be amongst friends or be in marriages and be in relationships. And these people turn on you. They want to use you for their profit. And your love can be a stronghold. But the Lord is telling you, pull out the weapons I gave you. I gave you weapons against this against moments such as these. No, not weapons that men create for the weapons of our warfare are not common, but mighty through God to the pulling down stronghold. He changes the way we think. He changes the way we see things, the way we interpret them, the way we understand them. Sometimes we have to learn to be still. We have to learn to speak that word over the situation and let the Lord come in. We got to cast down imagination. Some things when we look at them can say it's over. It's over. But we got to cast it down. No, no, no. And every casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. There are things before our eyes that we're living through that go directly against the most high and what he told us and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Who's Christ? The word of the most high. He brought Joseph to my mind. He, he, can you imagine Joseph in prison? Could Joseph see where I was taking him? Those years, those years he spent in prison, even though he had the favor of the jailer, he was still in prison. It's a hard thing when you're innocent to be punished for something. Most of us spending two hours, two days, two weeks in jail is beyond words and you're innocent. But Joseph sat for two years or more for something he did not do. He suffered for being an honorable man because Potiphar's wife 
She saw that anointing on him, even though she didn't know what it was she was looking at. It wasn't just the handsome on Joseph's face. It was that anointing on him that attracted her. And she lied to such a degree that because he wouldn't lay with her, she had him put in jail. There are people in our lives that would rather destroy us. This thing is repeating. Remember, his brothers did the same thing, sold him out because they were jealous of what the Lord had put on him. She was jealous that he would not be with her. You know, she's a married woman. And sold him again through a lot into a prison house. But they didn't know the end of the matter. Many of us right now, beloved, are going through not understanding there's a process. And no, it is not something joyous. It's that furnace of affliction, beloved. He removes all the ego, all, every, many times, things we have lived and stood by all our lives that don't support us. They don't line up with the word of the Most High. And he starts casting it down and casting it down in order to raise us up for who we are supposed to be. If you've never known hardship, how can you be a leader when other people who've had hardships come to you? Joseph was being molded. He started out a beloved child, but he ended up on a rocky road, a hard road, looking out of prison houses, warning his days of freedom. But he understood what it was like to be mistreated. He understood what it was like to be abused. He understood what it was like to be lied on. He understood what it was like to be sold away by people that are supposed to love you. People who want to see your destruction and the shock that it must have put in him. But let's see what Job said. We go to the book of Job. And he tells us what the most high will do to set up on high those that be low. He was coming from a prison house that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. Beloved. The end of the man. Many times we're going through and we just can't see there's a blessing in the middle of this mess. Sometimes we put too much stock in family, and I love family, but there is a family that the Most High gives us that we're supposed to trust in because they're following the ways of the Lord. Can you imagine when Joseph was second only to Pharaoh? The story doesn't even tell us what happened to Potiphar and his wife. Even if Joseph didn't seek revenge, this is the man that you told me tried to rape you. She's looking. Look at who Joseph became. It doesn't tell us what happened with Potiphar's wife or Potiphar. Because at one point he saw the honor in Joseph. But sometimes people hate you because of the fact you've got that quality inside of you. They want to smear it. They want to pollute it, knowing they have no right. It can come out of your children. It can come out of your siblings. It can come from your parent, your husband, your child, your best friend. But what you also have to understand is sometimes it's set up that way to create that person the most high is going to bring out of you. Understand. 
Joseph, when he's talking to his brothers, when we look at Genesis chapter 50, and I'm going to the 20th verse, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Those weapons, beloved. If you are not put in a situation where you got to pull them out and you have to use them, you have to trust them. You have to believe beyond anything you see. It's easy. It's so easy to say these things when you're not in the midst of a battle and you don't know the end of the matter. Many of us are dealing with sicknesses and we've got to lean on the word of the most high. We got to lean on his word. Yes, we do. And it's a war. It's a spiritual warfare. Many of the things we go through, it's not some flesh and blood person upon us. We're wrestling because they didn't give us enough money. We're wrestling because somebody stole something. We're wrestling because this person we love has betrayed us. But when we pull out our weapons, we have to speak the word over it and stand on it, beloved. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Joseph's brothers... They thought to kill him initially, to destroy his visions, to destroy his dreams. We've got people right now that they want to destroy Yashara. They want their destruction. They were sold away. They spent time in prison, be it in slavery, in the land amongst people that were using them for their own benefit. And when Yasharel didn't yield much like Potiphar, they were lied on. Many Israelites have been betrayed by their own brothers and sisters, just like Joseph. And they're looking out of those prison windows, the prison window of, I can't believe you betrayed me. I can't believe you sold me out to an enemy. I can't believe you want to destroy my dreams because I have a dream and you hate me because of it. But the most I always put somebody in the midst, beloved. He always makes a way. That's where Reuben came in. There are Rubens in your life right now that are speaking up for your behalf. Whether you know it or not, there are Rubens in your lives, beloved, who are speaking behind the scenes. They are trying to come up with ways to make sure you are safe from harm. And the Most High is using them. And even when you're sold out, he's turning the situation around to make it work out for your good. the furnace of affliction, beloved. Remember, we shall come forth as pure gold. A lot of times we're looking through the eyes of the world. We're looking through this system because the system is always pressing on us. But the weapons of our warfare are not calm, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There are things in our lives that are trying to take dominance. They want full attention. And it's that distraction that keeps us from recognizing, wait a minute, I don't have to fight you on your terms. I'm a child of the most high. And though I don't know the end of the matter, my father does. And I will speak that word over this situation. 
I will cast down imaginations. Why do we have to cast them down? Because sometimes our fear and our worry and our concern can get away from us and we start projecting on it and get riled up even more. Like Joseph looking through the windows of a prison house, thinking, when will this end? Never understanding at the time who he was destined to be, what, how the Most High was working it out. Even when he helped people when he was down, the butler and the baker, the one who survived forgot about it, even though he interpreted his dream, even though he gave him back his hope. He left Joseph. He didn't care. He forgot all about him until the king had dreamed and couldn't get anybody to interpret him. And then he remembered there was a man. You too, beloved, will be remembered. Many of the people that you helped along the way, Yahoo is using them. And something they say, something they put out in the atmosphere. Yasharel, <clears throat> there's something in the atmosphere that when that word goes out and you're remembered, Yasharel has come up to the remembrance of the king. Who? Yeshua, Hamashiach, the word of the Most High, that word has gone out. And the Most High hears it. There's a people left in the prison house of a system that they need to be released from. And the elevation's coming. But because you're looking through the eyes and windows of a prison, it's hard to see. All the people that put you there, they'll see you rising. All the people that mistreated you, they even come to fear your wrath, never understanding the most high has a higher good for this situation. It's not just about vengeance. Many of the people that did what they did to Joseph thought he's going to seek such revenge that that's all they thought about. But Joseph had a higher calling. This thing that Yasharel is experiencing, it's not just about Babylon because we're leaving below. But right now we see through the eyes of a prison window Remembering those who lied and put us there, those who profited through the lie, those who acted like Potters for his wife and wanted us to give up our honor. But it doesn't matter, all of it. What the devil meant for our bad, the most high is going to use for our good. And all things work together for the good of those that love him even if we don't see it right now. And what do we have to do? Pull out those weapons of our warfare that are not carnal. It's a word, beloved. No matter what happens, no matter what. And yes, we do have family that betrays us. Yes, we do. We have friends that betray us. All that Joseph did in Potiphar's house, look at what Potiphar's wife did. When he helped the butler and the baker, although the baker died, the butler forgot about him. But Joseph had prominence in the eyes of the man when they were in jail together. Many people, when they're down with you, they're down with you. But when they rise up and they know the truth and they could help you or speak a word, they forget about you, but the most high didn't. And he's refining you, beloved. Be encouraged. 
even if you're looking through the window of a prison house, that prison house being a situation in your life that you can't see the freedom from, you can't see the door of your liberty. The most high is the door. His, his word is that door. And to raise you from such a lowly position, second only to him, that's the end of the matter. When Yasharel comes up, you're going to have the father, his word. Yasharel is going to be in the leading position. And the entire world is going to be shocked. Many of you individually have been cast down. But he's using it to refine you, beloved, and to make you lean on him, not your own understanding. It is making you trust him, grow closer to him, because there's no other support. And then you see the glory of the most high. You know, it did not come from your intellect. It did not come from your skills or your ingenuity. You know, this happened only because of what the most high did. And had all those events not occurred, you wouldn't be the person you are. You wouldn't think the way you think. You wouldn't see the way you see. He tenderizes your heart in places where it might have been hard and he breaks up that fallow ground inside of you to plant those true seeds of his word. He gets you by yourself, even when you don't want it, so that he can work it out inside of you, beloved. Be encouraged. That door to your freedom, to your liberty, be it the stress on your mind, the problem with your family. You, sometimes you got to let it go. You got to let it go and let the most high work it out. Irregardless of what that workout may be. He knows. He knows, beloved. And just like Joseph. That day when they took him out of the prison house when he had to get cleaned up in a hurried fashion, bring me, bringing him before that king, before the Pharaoh. There's a cleanup coming, beloved, a refreshing. It's not the end of the matter. You're being refined. And all those people that betrayed you, that sold you out, that tried to destroy your dream, they were actually being used to bring it to pass and they don't even know. Be encouraged. The weapons of our warfare are not calm. They are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, the thinking, the behaviors, the words, the actions. Be encouraged, beloved. Shalom.